Today, we're going to explain how we can calculate GDP through three different approaches. And within these three approaches, we will talk about income approach and expenditure approach. But what is the GDP? GDP represents gross domestic product, or GDP, the market value of all the country production inside its border within a given time. So what is the value produced? What are the value produced? What we produce? We produce products, and this product, it is from the production, and we are using them in the market price where we produce it within a country, when during a given period of time. So what are the three approaches that we're going to explain it? It is national expenditure, national output, and national income. So if I have a person named Sara spend the final goods $10, the market value is 10, and the income to these factors of production is $10. So we are going to look for the output approach, which is the value added, and then the expenditure approach and income approach. Let's start our journey in the production of value. To measure the total market value of all final goods and services, it is very difficult to calculate GDP if we are going to include intermediate goods. So we are going to focus on the final goods. Why? To avoid the double counting. Why? Because the value added method is better in order to give me accurate without double counting double calculation. So what is the value added approach? It is sales minus cost. So it is the sum of value minus added of country. So let's say our example that we have a farmers and yes, this farmers have a production represented in the form of wheat. Assume that the cost here is zero and the wheat is going to sell it with $2. So we need to add here that this is the sales minus the cost. So the value added is usually being value added is equal sales minus the cost. So let's see what this farm is going to do after he is going to sell the wheat. After he's going to sell the wheat to the another one, which is the bakery or the making factory for flour. So the wheat will be the cost here. So I will take the wheat it will be here the sales, but here it will represent the cost. And this flower making factory is going to sell it with a $3.5 flower. What else? After we take this, we are going to look for the second stage. Then the value added is 1.5. The bakery shop is $6. So let's see here. This is the price or the selling price. Then this is will be the cost. So this is the bread and the bread is the final cost. So this is the $6 will represent my GDP. So if I add all the production inside the country or the final product spread, all the items, the furniture, cars, all this will be included in the forms of what we call it GDP. But what about the value added approach that avoid the double counting? So if I add two plus 1.5 plus 2.5, this is will give me the $6. But if I add the two plus the 3.5 plus a six, this is called miscalculation and what we call it double count. So what is the GDP in this simplest form in this example? This is can be represented by the summation of each stage two plus 1.5 plus 2.5, which is the six dollar. After we explain the value added approach that can be existing, we go for the final goods or services that produce in the final form, which is the final production. If the intermediate meaning, the meaning of the intermediate is, it is need another process to reach the final goods. So the GDP include only the item that are traded, not the intermediate. So after we finish the value added, let's go for the circular flow to elaborate how we can use the circular flow to explain the income. We explained in the previous video the circular flow, which is the relation between the household and the firms. So we have this part, which is the factors of production, the resources, land, labor, and capital. And this is the output in the forms of the goods and services. But the cycle here will be starting from the firms. What are the firms? The firms is going to give the, the household the money after we receive the sales of the goods markets, we are going to have income. And this income is going to be channeled from whom? From the firm sides 
to the household. When we have the inflow of money to the household, which is representing income, this is will reflect on the consumption. So here, if this is the cycle equivalent, so the income would exactly equal to the expenditure or the spending. But assume that this is the income of any person or household. What will be the income? The income will be including consumption plus the saving here. So I'm not going to spend all my income on consumption. I will keep part of the saving. Where I'm going to put this saving, I will put this saving in the financial markets. What is the financial market? In the bank. So if I have a hundred, seven hundred dollar if 70 dollars goes for consumption and the 30 goes for the saving so in this example let's say for example here that my consumption assume let's say for example according to the numbering that we have it in this example that the income is ten thousand and i'm going to consume nine thousand nine hundred and ninety six and the rest that I have it, which is the four dollars, this is what goes for the mean for the saving. So this is to explain the part here. So this is the first sector, which is the consumption and the money. Where is this saving? This saving is going to be imposed in the banks. And then the investors is going to take it to the business sides in order to do project. Then this is will be my investment. The accumulation of saving here inside the banks can be channeled to the firms in the forms of law. What else? The government as well. Let's say the government have two sides, inflow of money that come from taxes and outflow, which is the government expenditure. So this is the gross expenditure. But here pay attention, it is the taxes, the net that what we serve it. So you will understand later why they are not equal to that. So the government here, it will be 2,927. And this is the third sector. But if we are having open economy, this means there is an expert and import. What is the meaning of expert and import? They are a trading, and this trading is representing the experts. I export product, and when I export this product, this product will provide me as an expert we inflow of money. But if I am importing that the money I have generated inside, it will go outside the country. So by this, we know the four parts of the GDP from the income and expenditure approach. And we need to explain more what is the meaning of each one of them. So the circular flows is explaining the four components, which is the consumption of the expenditure by the household and goods and services, and the investment by the businessman or the capital goods in the forms of instrument, equipment, and building. Government, they are doing expenditures or spending on health and education and other stuff like that. Net expert is the net trade of export minus import, inflow minus outflow. Expert represent the goods that it produce inside the borders of the country, let's say in the state, and that it traded with the rest of the world. Imports, I imported product outside my home country to inside. So the consumption, we can take that in some items are included and other are not. Second-hand goods, we're going to exclude it. We're not using them in our GDP. Why? There is no current production. Commission is spent on buying a second-hand bag, let's say, for example, or item. It is included in the current production. So, because it is in the spending now. Expenditure on illegal goods and services, it is excluded, not official records. So, all the official records only included in the GDP. What about the investment? What we include and what we exclude? Investment, we look for the gross domestic capital formation. And here we add to it the change in inventory. And we add to it, this is changes of inventory to give me the gross domestic fixed capital formation. So what is this? It is representing purchasing land, factories, flats, machinery, commissions, legal charge. Investors spend on intermediate goods and services such as raw material, electricity charges, all these things are included. But what we exclude, we exclude the value of final goods already included in the value of intermediates. So we exclude them because of the value. Of Investors also, we look for them in the gross domestic capital formation plus the change in stock. And as well, we can add the net domestic plus the depreciation. What do you mean by net? The net of 
the value of the asset plus the new assets that we have it, which is called the depreciation. Net domestic capital formation plus the depreciation plus the change in the stock, this is represent my total investment. The total investment can be reflected in the depreciation value because it is gross total and the change in stock. So let's see here if I am having an investor spend 1 million to buy a 10 new printing machine and spend 10,000 to repair old printing machine. So here, when we go to calculate the net domestic, it is the 1 million plus the depreciation because he want to fix it to repair it. So this is what we included in the investment. What is the government expenditure? We, what we include and what we exclude. We include house allowances for people in civil servants. We add the medical allowances for supporting people for medical issues. Building new airport is all included. But what is excluded? Any transfer of payment, public assistance. This is not included because it is cash. And here, this is, this goes for public assistance and is not included in our calculation of JDP. Net exports, it is the export minus imports. And here, this is the domestic exports of goods and service plus the re-exporting of goods and the exports of services. And then all the three items, we are going to subtract from them what imports of goods and imports of services, as if we are looking for tourism, we are exporting services and we are importing. Could the residents go outside, they so the import and they are exporting when other foreigners come here. So this is what we call it, the experts. Expert of services, spending of foreign tourism in Hong Kong. Uh, this is called transportation services, insurance, banking services, medical services, retail services, hotel accommodation, all these items that is existed inside the countries from foreigner inside home country. This is called experts. Why we have to deduct the imports and services? Why we excluded because it is the spending outside the borders of the country. A resident buy a new car from another country, take southern so and the import value. So here, if we look for the resident bought a new car, so this is his own spending, and he import, then it's going to be minus two thousand five hundred. So this is the consumption part, and this is the import part. So this is reflect the production. So I buy things inside. But unfortunately, I import things that it is representing outflow of money. Let's see another example to see what we include and what we are not including in the GDP or the GNP. A Mexican company operate a restaurant in US. The value of the restaurant output produced by Mexican citizen and the equipment they own it is included in what? So here we need to clarify what it is included in Mexico and what it is not included in USA. So it is included in USA GDP and Mexico GNP. Because if you see here in this example, Mexican company operate outside the borders of its country. So once it operate outside the borders of each country, so the profit is going to be added or the transfer is going to be added. So I have a GDP, but I'm going to add to it the profit or the operation that I received from working in US. And this is, will be included in the GDP of Mexico. So this is the GDP, sorry, it is the GNP of Mexico. So GNP of Mexico. So what about the US GDP? The value of the rest and output produced by the Mexican citizen. So this is will be included in the GDP. This is the differences between what we include and what we're going to include. Let's have another example to clarify the difference between GDP and GNP, resident and non-resident inside the economy. So let's say we have a person called Thomas, a US citizen, work in Canada. So you are working in another country. The value of output you produce is Thomas here, then you will find he works in Canada. Then this is will be reflected in the forms of, this is will be reflected in the value of the GDP uh, inside the production of his home. But the profit of transfer is going to go to the mother country. An resident of a country A earns 500 million of income from abroad, and the resident of other country earned only 200 million in a country. These earnings are counted in the four in a country A. 
So country A net factors payment from abroad are negative, and this the GDP is larger than its G and P. So they are working outside the borders of the country. So what we have here, we have the expenditure report, which is the C plus an I plus a G. And this is represented the four components of the uh, GDP calculation from the expenditure approach. So when we add the four components, this is giving me the GDP from the expenditure, from the spending approach. Expenditure equal income because firms here pays out everything they receive as in income to the factors of production. Total expenditure must be equal to the income. But the value of production equal incomes expenditure, this is theoretically, because if let's say, for example, I want to find it theoretically. So if I'm going to have a consumption 5,000 for a certain household and export 100 and government purchases 900 and imports. So here, if we add the 5,000 plus the 900, plus in addition, the investment 1,000, and then we take the net export, which is 100 minus 200, that will be minus 100. It is the outflow of money. So we go here to clarify the percentage of GDP. What are the more important sector and what is the less important sector? The most important sector of the whole cycle of the circuit flow is the consumption. And if we had the total amount of GDP in a certain economy per person, let's say, and we take a percentage, we find that the consumption itself 70%, 11% for investment government, 20%. But here, this is the problem because in this sector, you will see that there is a trade deficit because they are importing more than they exporting outflow of money from the country to outside. So this is the GDP. What's about this US GDP? We go for the labor and we go for the labor earns and the other factors of production to see the income approach. Capital, land and entrepreneurs. So these are the returns. And if we add all the four items there and these incomes received, we will have the calculation of GDP. So expenditure not in GDP, we use, we didn't include the used goods and services. We didn't use the second hand. We didn't use the financial assets as well. But in the income approach, if we look for the income approach, we need to measure the GDP by summing the income that the firms pay household for factors of production. So we're going to divide it to big category for the income approach for GDP. Wages into strength and profit. What are the wages? This is called the compensation plus all the payment for labor service. It includes the salaries and also the fringe benefit we have. Interest rent on profit, we have interest rent on profit called net operating surplus in the national account. It is the sum of the income earned by capital. And the interest, it is received on loans or the returns on loans. So this is what we call it, the income that created. Also, if I have a piece of land and I rent it, this is called the payment for this land. What is the profit? Profit include the profit of corporation and small business. So if we add the two components, the wages and the uh, net operating of surplus, we will have the net domestic product. So this is called net domestic product. But if I want to have the gross, then we need to add over it the depreciation and other taxes as we're going to see. So let's see here that I have an example and I have the data from a country A and this country represent data for a year 2010 for these households, the spendings on goods, durable and non-durable, tangible and non-tangible, and we have inventory and we have other items. If we want to classify these items and find the GDP, how we can find each sector? How can we find the consumption, investment, government, and finally the net export? Let's see each item. So the first three items here, the household, the durable, which is last for many times, I can use it many times, such as the fridge, or the cars, this is called durable. House purchases is non-durable goods. This is that amount of money. Purchases of service, 301. And when we add all these items that the household are spending, this is what we call it, consumption. Consumption, expenditure on consumption. What about the investment? What we're going to invest? If I'm going to buy an apartment, 
this is will not be included in the consumption. It is invest. I invest part of my money in buying a new house and it is called investment. If I buy a machines, equipments, uh, purchases of new structures. So all these items that present investment. But since we are adding gross investment, total investment, so this is called gross. What do you mean by gross? This is called total gross. So what is the gross? It the total. So we need to add to with the investment plus the depreciation. If I want to find the net, then it will be the gross minus the depreciation. And this is the difference of item net investment. So we, we calculate all the items here in front of you, you will have the investment. Brilliant. What about the government? What the government is spending on? The giving wages and as well government purchases on public works. So this is represented the government. What about the transfer payment? We said that we did not include this item. It is not included inside the GDP. If I have a foreign purchases of domestic products and domestic purchases of foreign goods, so export minus imports, it minus 332. When we add the four items, the consumption, the investment, and the government, and the net trade, so we will have 7,253. So this is represented the GDP 7,253. Brilliant. So the net domestic product at a factor cost is the sum of wages. Net domestic product at factor is not GDP. To have it, we need to make adjustment. How we can do this adjustment from factor cost or from the net product to gross product. So what did you mean by from factor cost to market prices? So the expenditure approach value of goods and market prices, income approach values and all these things. Indirect taxes make the market prices exceed the factor. So if I add all the direct taxes and add a depreciation to the net income, then I can have the GDP. So to convert it, we must do what? Add the indirect taxes and subtract the subsidies and add for it the GDP. Let's see how we can find from net to gross. So income approach measure net product. The expenditure approach measure total product. So how we can reach it from the gross profit in a firm profit subtracting depreciation? We do that in net profit is a firm profit after subtracting depreciation of capital. What is the depreciation? It is the value of consuming an asset before it becomes obsolete. Income includes net profits, so they give us the net measures. And this is called the gross expenditures, called the gross. To get the gross domestic product from income, we must add depreciation. So let's see how we can do this adjustment for the wages and net domestic product. So if you add to them the indirect taxes, and the depreciation, and this is, will give me the GDP from income approach. So it will be the same value as we did it in the first example for expenditure approach. So GDP and related measures of production and income. So we will see gross national product. It is the market of value that we explain it are in outside the borders of the country. Net factor from abroad, other transfer of money. So, to find the disposable income or to find the net result of income, we look for the disposable personal income and how we can get it. It's at the personal income after deducting the direct taxes from my wages. So we see here that the relation between GDP and GNP. So we have the GDP and we have the GNP, but plus the net transfer. Sometimes the GNP be more than the GDP if their net transfer is more. And if it is not, then they will be the same. If the net national income, where we subtract the depreciation, then the value become less and less. If I'm looking for the national income, the total income received, so I will take in consideration the statistical discrepancy, which is the difference of exchange rate from one country to another. And if I take from the government direct taxes and less return the profit, then we have the full picture of the GDP, as you see it, GDP, GNP, net national income and national income and personal income and disposable income. So before we finish, when some factors of production are unemployed, real GDP is less than the potential. I'm not using the production. When some factors of production are overemployed and working hard, real GDP sometimes exceed the potential. 
So let's take in consideration that this GDP fluctuate according to the potential GDP, the maximum output. Sometimes the actual minus the plant, it's not having a big variance between them and sometimes have a big value. To measure the trend of standard of living, how the standards of living change, sometimes increase or decrease. So the standards of living, it can be by GDP per capita. But take it and pay attention that we're not including many things such as ledger time and the fun time that's not included, quality, uh, pollutions that exist, environmental pollution is not calculated, the cost of all these standards of living. So the GDP does not reflect many indicators. So we have to look for other indicator to see if it is reflecting the standards of living or not. So air health and life expectancy and all this, the quality of life and the political freedom or the social justice in a country, this cannot be reflected by the GDP. A country with the low standards of living may be enjoy political freedom and other are not. So by this, we finish the three approaches of calculating GDP using income approach, expenditure approach, as well the value added approach. Thank you for watching.